about David. Um, he gave a sort of a brief biographical, I guess, introduction to our relationship. I want to say something more about him as a writer and a publisher. Um, he's been operating Habanish Press since before I knew him. He's put out a lot of great books. Um, he has some up here. Um, he also edits Kyle Coley, which is, a, at this point, a rather long-running journal. It's featured a lot of great poets, fiction writers. Uh, the forthcoming issue is going to have essays. Um, so please check that out. Um, also, he's part of the most recent um, sort of set of CUNY publications, um, which are these archival research, uh, sort of unearthing of um, Little Red Text these days, so he was involved in looking at a, a Beowulf translation. Um, and those are really outstanding, and they should be proud to have been a part of that. Um, I'm grateful, of course, that he uh, took the interest in my poetry to publish his chapbook. Uh, but really, more than anything, is his writing. Um, David sort of uh, doesn't pay attention to genre, maybe, in, in the way that a lot of poets think that they should. So. Uh, his recent work, for example, Field Work, sort of bridges that. It has poetry, it has songs, it has prose. Um, it's a really interesting uh, book to read, I think. Um, but I also consider him just to be a fine poet, um, a lyric poet. Um, so I'm happy and honored to introduce David Habonic. Thanks, Micah. So, yes, yeah, uh, Micah mentioned that this book does have, it's kind of a, a notebook type book. And um, started out when I lived in San Francisco. Uh, I lived in this neighborhood. I lived in, uh, gosh, pretty much every neighborhood. <laughs> Moving around the way people do here. And just used to walk around with my notebook, write stuff down. And, uh, I'm really, I mean, being out in the audience, there's lots of people that I was friends with, that I lived with, that I uh, bounced some of these, this stuff off, and uh, grateful to have Kevin, Kevin Killian, who's here, who's kind enough to write a little blur for this book, and is also the person who alerted me to the Babel manuscript in Spicer's archive. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, and Stephen Vincent, also someone who's been in touch with me about that a lot. So I'm just going to read uh, some of these notes, and then, as Micah says, there are songs. And the second half of this evening is going to sort of transition to music. So I'll play a couple of songs from the book, and then Caitlin, who's a real musician, is going to do that as well. So July 4th. Sometimes there's nothing else simple and basic enough to express what I'm feeling, and so I have to think in terms of hockey. Yay. Sorry. <laughs> the skating, the moves, the turns, the shooting, puck hitting the back of the net. Yeah, that one's for you. Thank you. <laughs> July 9th. I notice it again as we're all forced to transfer onto a new bus that urge everyone has to sit in the exact same seat on the new bus. <laughs> which I'm unable to do because somebody's already sitting in mine. Everyone looking around at first to check their relative positions. <laughs> July 10th, the aging store turns out to be the packaging store. <laughs> <laughs> July 11th, a girl who has a bladder infection. I don't hear the rest of the story. <laughs> August 6th, a bus zooms right past me. I have to wait over half an hour for the next one. When it finally arrives, a guy comes running out of the park, and I, with irrational resentment, think, he better not catch this bus after all the shit I had to go through. 
and I really take his appearance as a personal affront, but it turns out he's just running. <laughs> June 9th, S's film idea. A Robin Hood who steals women's underwear and gives them to poor hookers on Cap Street. <laughs> <laughs> that was you, Sonny. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> you made a lot of money on that one. <laughs> August 13th, at the playground, six little kids playing tag. A kid named Bill is it. He dives bravely from ladder to slide to tag another boy who denies being touched after sitting there despondent for a few minutes. But I touched you while others run away and consolidate again on a different contraption. Bill finally picks himself up and continues the chase. The others elude him and gather on a wooden bridge, taunting him as Bill ignores them. Then he sneaks over and chases them again, but whenever he singles one out and is close, the kid calls time out. <laughs> and they both stop. Bill with an oddly adult look of consternation on his face. <laughs> June 28th, a sonnet. Wings spread like the man slicking his hair over the water fountain in Buena Vista Park. The gulls soar out into the air above the pond, gently lapping, heavy breathing of a woman, power walking which suddenly stops as she passes, jogger adjusting his pack, but how many of them want to be a river or even one of those buoys floating against the current? No, they want to be hamburgers, pickup trucks, Shimano gears, all these things we make now that don't last much longer than our brief breaths pulling us that much closer to wind. May 8th. The Stolish and I have vodka billboard that looms over the 101. Does anyone remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the almost futurist Rochenko design of it with white lettering and satisfyingly thick red bands going up the sides, then the richness of the black and white photo of the three women, the strong featured blonde in the foreground holding a drink and glancing suggestively to her right as if she's just caught the eye of a man beyond the edge of the frame. Then the Asian one and the brunette leaning close behind her as if they've spotted some men who haven't noticed them yet or don't yet have the courage to return their glances, <laughs> smiling, unlike the serious blonde. They won't be as hard to get. And the dimpled chin of the brunette hints at a lilting humor. And their gaze, their gazing slightly away from you makes it safe to gaze back, even as it draws you into the tinkling hilarity of the ballroom. October 14th. The astonishing shit of dogs. <laughs> Rich, red-brown, often with undigested bits of food in it, beaded, sculptural, coming out in little balls <laughs> or soft serve in one big lump warm in my hand through the plastic bag. <laughs> Last job I had in San Francisco was a dog walker. January 15th, when I heard about the plane crash in the Hudson in which everyone, whoever, survived, my first thought was how the alarm clock had woken us with a news report in media race, and the teenage girl was dragged into the abandoned house and sexually assaulted. April 2nd, in the library by the windows, a girl sat with her back to me at the next table reading a book. A boy sat down at the next table after this, so that the three of us formed a line with her the midpoint. After a little while, a noise made the boy look up at the girl, and I, glancing up through her, through a part in her hair, so to speak, was caught in his gaze, being looked at as a pure woman with everything that might mean as a boy looking up at a girl precisely to see himself, seen by her. A look that totally displaced me, annihilated me. <laughs> Now I'm gonna, if you'll indulge me, I'm gonna do a couple of songs. Both of which, the lyrics to both of which are in the book, but 